morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're you're dialed in from. Um, we're here to start the January Engineering Insights webinar. My name is Donald Tebow. I'm the Director of Product Management here at Hedera. Um, and today we're going to be diving into some of the updates and changes you can see on our Hedera mainnet, mirror node, and a few other components um, as we go. So, um, you know, before we jump in, uh, just, you know, some housekeeping, um, you all should be able to send questions through the Q&A or in the chat, we'll, we'll try and keep an eye on both. Um, and ultimately, you know, we're really just going to open up the floor for any questions or feedback um, after we go through a bit of the updates on the intro. Um, I'll also mention, uh, hopefully you all saw some of the news. We've been recently uh, welcoming new council members to the Hedera Governing Council, uh, most recently EFTPOS out of Australia. So um, we're very excited to see both our council as well as overall community growing. Um, so with that, I will jump right in. So just yesterday, uh, we updated our public testnet to our version 0.11.0 Hedera services code. Um, so this was available on PreviewNet a few weeks ago and is available again for integration on the public testnet today or yesterday. Uh, this will be pushed to the mainnet uh, on Thursday of next week. Um, so you know, please make sure whether you're building an SDK or mirror node or even your own application that you uh, give things a try on the public testnet and ensure everything's working well. The most notable change I wanna make sure to surface here, and you should have seen some communications about this over the past few weeks, is an update we're making to our event stream and record stream uh, to, from version two to version five. Um, so you should be able to see the new version file in our GitHub repo, as well as in some of the documentation on our docs page. Um, that's going to be particularly important to update if you're a mirror node operator yourself, or your application is relying directly on the event or record stream directly. Um, it will be something that is a breaking change if not updated, so we wanted to make sure uh, after communicating a few weeks ago that, that we you know, remind everybody here uh, to make that update. Um, I'll quickly share uh, our release notes um, to make sure you all know where this information is. You can go to the Hedera services uh, repo or the, sorry, the Hashgraph repo and our, our Hedera services repo um, and see the release notes for version 0.11.0. And you can see that Largely, it's very much just focused on the record and event stream migration. Um, and you can see the descriptions uh, and those issues there. Um, so I'll now jump over uh, to our mirror node update. So let me switch back to the PowerPoint. Um, so the mirror node, our open source Hedera mirror node software um, was recently updated to version 26. Um, so the first change I'll make sure to mention here is that this supports the new event and record stream formats just previously mentioned. Um, so if you're a mirror node operator, you can get that latest code and update your mirror node to ensure you're staying in sync and up to date. Um, we've also continued the implementation for TimeScale DB, uh, which will be a much more scalable uh, architecture for the mirror node itself. Uh, and I'll also call out there were some monitoring improvements made in version 0 0.25.0. 0. Um, so we've had a few releases since the last mainnet release. Um, now, again, I will jump over to the repo so you can see again the release notes for, for that. Um, so again, uh, right next to where you'll see the Hedera services code, you'll see our Hedera mirror node open source repo, uh, and you can see the latest release notes for version 0 0.26.0. Again, I'll just reiterate here, um, this upgrade is critical, uh, especially if you're a mirror node operator, um, to update for that event and record stream change. So please make sure you uh, do so if, if you're operating a mirror node and, and confirm all of your applications are working as expected. I'll just double check the Q&A here before I go on. Um, Lena, maybe you can, ah, there it is. Um, 
I think there was a question about whether or not we'll be changing the mainnet node update date. Um, that is a, a cadence we like to keep of updating on the first Thursday of every month. Um, and given the preview net availability and test net availability, our goal is to keep that date. Um, but feel free to reach out if there's any assistance or debugging uh, you might need for updating, updating your, your applications. So the next item I'll mention as a recent note from uh, before, since our last call, uh, we also enabled the Hedera token service on our mainnet. Um, so it's not yet been fully publicly announced, but available now on the both public testnet and mainnet. So you can natively issue your tokens uh, on the Hedera token service, get access to a performant and decentralized token issuance model that has all of the great features of HBAR like things like low fixed cost and high performance and an ability to have any Hedera account hold those tokens. It also gives you the ability to customize different roles and behaviors for that token. So you can decentralize the supply management. You can have things like KYC or account freezing capabilities if you so choose. And you can also leverage the name and symbol field uh, to make it either a fungible or non-fungible token depending on your use case. Um, so we've got a demo application also in GitHub where you can give that a try yourself uh, for issuing your own token. Um, we're very excited about some of the, the ecosystem members that will be joining that. So keep an eye out um, for, for more on, on who's gonna be using the Hedera token service. Um, I see a question on that about mentioning allowing the creation for NFTs. Um, I'll talk about this here and then also point to uh, one of our demo applications. Um, the ability to have an NFT is really just having a fixed supply token created with the Hedera token service that points to some metadata about the token in the name or symbol field. So one of the development patterns we've seen is that people who want to create an NFT representing maybe a digital collectible or Greg's favorite example, a picture of a cat, could store that metadata in the Hedera file service or any other file service and make reference to that metadata in the name or symbol field. So that gives you the ability to have a fixed singleton NFT token representing maybe a high value asset or commodity, as well as the ability to fractionalize that asset's ownership in your token definition. We're exploring some ways to how to make it more extensible so you could have similar NFTs of a common type, uh, but NFTs are definitely something that are possible to create with the Hedera token service today. Again, feel free to keep dropping any questions uh, in the chat, whether it's about some of the features here or our upcoming uh, features. Um, the next question or, or next topic I wanted to cover was the upcoming features not to be aware of for both our 0.12.0 release on mainnet and mirror net update as well. Um, so you have a, a visibility into what's coming down the pipe. Um, so one feature which is likely to be in an upcoming release is scheduled transactions. And that allows you to collate multiple signatures for a multi-sig transaction on the network and have it submit at time of collation. Um, that would be improved in the future to then allow specification of executing at a specific time. Uh, but this feature is one that we're very excited about for many decentralized applications wanting to have that uh, network uh, multi-sig collation. Another item I'll make sure to mention, especially for some of those wallet and mirror node operators is our migration to the account balance file supporting Hedera token service tokens. Um, so this update is available so that you can get a single clean file all in protobuf that presents both HBAR and Hedera token service token account balances. Now this will be uh, a rolling migration, if you will. So we'll make the new version available while maintaining the old version of the account balance file um, for third parties and then eventually migrate fully to the new version. Um, so make sure to keep an eye out for that to start your integration if you leverage that account balance file. 
And lastly, I'll mention another feature we're quite excited about is improvements to node operation and maintainability in a decentralized manner with node reconnect and update. And that's something you should see used um, on the mainnet in an upcoming release. So with that, that about covers all of the key topics we wanted to present on um, for this Engineering Insights webinar. Um, it's a bit shorter of one given we, we just started the year, but certainly a lot of exciting opportunities coming down the pipe. Um, I'll keep going just for a few more minutes if there's any other questions uh, in the Q&A. And also mention, as hopefully many of you saw, we recently started our hackathon um, focusing on use of the Hedera token service for different projects. Um, so I would highly recommend you look at some of the challenges that are supported and, and promoted by, by different partners, uh, as well as ourselves for things you could build with your Hedera token service token. Um, somebody was asking for more information on uh, creating HTS tokens. Um, you can find that information either at our Hedera token service white paper, I believe it's hedera.com backslash papers, um, or through our docs page at docs.hedera.com. Uh, um, that will give you both kind of the design as well as architecture or, or APIs for the Hedera token service. Um, if you also want to see a demo application, uh, we have an HTS demo in our GitHub repo as well. Um, the next question was how to make a React Native app with the token service. Um, so this is something that we've been exploring how to support better with some of our community SDKs. Um, so that's where I would definitely point you to uh, is essentially some of those SDK patterns and samples uh, as well. I don't have anything off the top of my head to, to talk through on that, but um, that is one of the integrations where we're looking to um, to support, again, with ecosystem members developing those open source SDKs uh, that are all available in our, our repo. Um, I see we've posted some of the links here, again, both to the hackathon and white paper in the chat. So I'd make sure to check there if you're interested. Um, there was next a question about ecosystem to complement the Hedera token service. Um, what I'll share about that is it's really important for token issuers that they have access to different wallets, exchanges, custody providers, explorers for their token so that they can support its adoption. Um, so one of our objectives is to make sure that that ecosystem supporting the Hedera token service is uh, growing with those third parties. Um, so that's been one of our priorities and something you'll see uh, as uh, more tokens are issued on the Hedera token service. Okay, and thanks again. We've got the token service API documentation uh, as well. And then I'll make sure to point to the docs page uh, as well. Um, I'll also make sure to mention, you know, with all of this development, we're hoping to continue our development process in a decentralized and, and democratic way. Um, so whether it's logging issues on any of these repos or our docs page, um, providing feedback to us via Discord, uh, or any of our other support channels, you know, we're always eager to hear and engage the community. So please uh, keep that feedback coming. All right, well, not seeing any other questions. I think we'll just about, oh, there, just in time. Um, somebody was asking about the documentation for HTS. Um, again, I would point you to the chat where you can find our docs link, uh, the link to the token service white paper, and the demo app from Greg, uh, which should be good to get you started with HTS. Um, and that's really the gateway to engaging with uh, a set of ecosystem members. All righty then. Well, thank you all so much for, for joining this January Engineering Insights webinar. Um, as I mentioned, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or the team, uh, whether you've got feedback on the webinar or things about questions about the technology that we can answer. Um, we're very excited for how we're starting the year and there's only uh, more good features, products, but also uh, you know, partners in the ecosystem to come. So thanks so much and we'll uh, wrap it up now. Bye-bye.